Subpoise node transmits its program location to a client device through beacon stuffing. With this information, you can trilaterate your position from one or more nodes within a building. Several nodes have been created to provide a calibrated and easy to configure device for anyone wanting to enable positioning indoors. Current testing from these nodes has shown positioning accuracy results of up to plus or minus half a meter. So people write to us all the time and say, I need a locator. I need something that is going to figure out where a thing is in my office or my warehouse or out on this field I'm planting. They want to know really precisely where things are, often indoors in ways that we can't really give them a good solution for right now. So the PDP in a nutshell, it's a replica of the PDP-8, which was the most popular mini computer in the 60s and early 70s. It shows much better than modern computers how computers work at a low level. It also shows where we came from in terms of computer history. And it's a nice contrast of concise programming versus today's um, yeah, bloatware. But the craftsmanship of this thing blew me out of the water. Looking at the case, the buttons, and, and all the LED work, and, and the documentation of this project, uh, I, I found that one highly compelling. We at NeuroTinker are here to change that with our Neurobytes technology that lets students and lifelong learners learn about the nervous system by building their own nervous systems. Trying to get them to communicate and see how they interacted, uh, it was really fun. We make a thing that looked a lot like a knee with a reflex when you tapped it, and it was just the coolest thing. It's sort of like little bits for analog. Um, or little bits for neural networks, more to, more to the point. It's a very unusual kind of a thing, and it's not the analog or the digital that I'm used to. It's really a different kind of a system. We created a hand drive wheelchair attachment that can attach to any wheelchair and it allows it to be powered in a rowing motion. That's good because it allows the user to sit up straighter, it uses bigger muscle groups, and it also keeps their hands cleaner. Traditionally, lever-powered wheelchairs come as like an all-inclusive kit, meaning that they're built into the chair. But because our hand drive wheelchair attachment is entirely 3D printed and completely open source, our hand drive can fit on any chair. So you've got the two handles, and you've got uh, what appears to be a brake handle on each one of the handles. And at first, you're thinking like, oh, that's, that's how, you know, you're going to, you're going to, like that, right? But then you pull the thing, and it actually reverses the ratchet, so you can go backwards. It really lowers the entry barrier for programmable logic. Um, it's really small, it's easy to grasp, and that's also the reason why I started using Dipsy. I had no prior experience with programmable logic and I found it very easy to use. You can uh, use any existing simulator software that you like to simulate your ideas and your designs, and once you are satisfied with them, you can use lattices. IceCube software to compile your design into a bitmap for the Dipsy. So I love the idea of um, FPGAs in dip packages. There are a few of them out there, um, but this is like the smallest little FPGA that you could get your little hands on. Backlift powerful sensors capable of detecting both the chemical and the physical harmful factors. Your app monitor is an example of a complex piece of technology driven by motivation to help people solve the pollution problem. Uh, you could have like real-time environmental information everywhere, which as, as far as um, environmental interests are concerned, that's the holy grail. What's going on over there? What data do we have from this? I mean, it removes politics entirely from the, the environmental equation because you've got the numbers and everyone can see them there's no arguing in order to determine how much water is in the soil i connect this meter to very sensors and by activating the meter i can actually read how much water is in the soil in this case the moisture is 74 percent enough for this vine. Very elegant design, right? There's not a lot to it, but the functionality is, um, and its simplicity is quite impressive. Uh, you put like uh, a, a variety of sensors at different depths, and you can tell um, exactly how much water is in each depth. 
so you get a better feedback loop about how much water is in the ground. You save water in that pinner, which is good for the environment, it's good for our fresh water supply, and it's good for the vines. I am Abhishek, and this is Beagle Logic, which turns your Beagle bone into a logic analyzer. Now, when I dig in capture, you see that the, it requests the amount of data, and there is your capture data. So this is the clock, this is the serial data, and this is a worst line because I have captured an i square s bus here. It's neat for a project to be taking advantage of the really high speed I/O on the and I've seen a few other kinds of projects do that. And this is a neat kind of an attempt to make a uh, a clean, neat logic analyzer accessory out of that. The thermal connector solders directly to the bottom of the chip through a hole in the PCB. Um, after soldering, this heatsink is designed to screw on from the bottom side. So <clears throat> this chip, this small chip, is directly coupled to this really large heatsink. We don't have a whole lot of options for yanking heat off of a small IC. You've got like, you know, a little piece of adhesive and you stick a heat sink on it and that's supposed to make all of your heat problems go away. This one is like, how about we do something on the other end, we put a hole through it and then this cool looking round, I dug it, I dug power pack. I think there's a future for that. Oh, this was a, a great thing that did pretty much one thing. Right? It told you how much sun you got. It had a few other little well, sensors. I think they had a, a firmware version that played Tetris or something. I don't remember what the game was. <laughs> that was hilarious. Uh, I think it might have been Pac-Man. Pac-Man? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this was a really nicely packaged thing. A great little um, 3D printed case and designed to look and feel like a real product. <laughs> Um, I sunburn really easily. I can be outside for a total of about 10 minutes on a sunny day without getting sunburned. So uh, when I'm at an outdoor event, and this means Maker Faire and everything else, I'm always darting between its shadows. So having something like this would actually be personally useful to me.